Hello, you're watching the Cloud Native Telco Summit, part of our year-round DSP leaders coverage. Now, Working Group 2 was spun out of Telenor in 2017, and its mission was to rebuild the mobile core network from the ground up. And the key to this was Cloud Native. So I'm delighted to say that joining me now is Erland Prescard, who is CEO and co-founder of WG2. Good to see you, Erland. Thanks so much for taking part in our summit. Now, Cisco recently announced its intention to acquire WG2. And given that this is an ongoing process, we can't discuss the details today. So let's go back instead to the beginning. Why was WG2 created? What convinced you and your Telenor colleagues to launch a startup company? Yeah, it's, uh, it's a slightly long story. I think it had uh, a few different uh, origin points, but for, for me, it was, I think, a time when I was working in Asia for Telenor, specifically in Bangladesh. Um, Bangladesh is one of those countries where the tech giants haven't really permeated uh, the area yet. So Telenor's um, telco in, in Bangladesh, Graminfo, has a very strong local presence. And I was working business development. I was working with, you know, doing new things in telco. I think you got a sense of what you can do uh, in a country like that if you have proper technology and scale. And I think we realized that there is lots of opportunity, but that the telco tech stacks aren't very well suited for small scale innovation and they're not very well suited to work across countries. So when we met with the Googles and the Facebooks of the world, they typically had made a change between every meeting. Uh, and for ourselves, we had maybe talked to a vendor about maybe issuing a change request, and it was just very apparent that the pace of change was very different between telcos and, and modern tech companies. I think this created a, a certain energy to try to infuse some of that, those practices and some of that culture back into telco. So I think that's my personal viewpoint of it. And then my co-founder Werner was in parallel working in Telenor uh, with something very similar and we met. And uh, from there on, we kind of, we took it from there. So you, you touched on the the pace of change or the lack of, of change and, and, and how the, the traditional telecoms industry is not exactly dynamic at, at, at times. So why can't you just take a traditional core network and put it on the public cloud? Why did you see the need to have to build a mobile core from within the cloud in a fully cloud native manner? I think it's, and this is a bit important that the cloud is an, a means to an end. It's not an end. I think so for us, Cloud was clearly the most suitable choice, uh, but it was a, it's a tool. It's a, it's a tool in a toolbox. It's not in itself, you know, the holy grail. The holy grail is to create a better product that is either more efficient or creates more value. And I think that's our clear aim. And then the, the being cloud and, or aiming for cloud and being cloud native was by far the most suitable toolbox if you were able to start with a clean sheet of paper, which we were. So we had the extreme luxury, I would say, which very few operators have, of starting with a, you know, a clean sheet of paper and saying, where do we run our stuff? And it was you know, infinitely easier to start in cloud. Uh, it, it was faster, it was easier, it was cheaper. Uh, and I think time has shown that cloud just gets stronger, whereas your, you know, your own data centers remain very, very stable or, or remain very uh, frozen, perhaps is another word. So you mentioned the reduction in complexity. Um, what else does a telco gain from having a dedicated cloud built and hosted core? Is it just about reduced complexity? Is it about operational efficiency gains, agility, innovation? How else do the telcos benefit? So I think there are two parts to that equation. Uh, so one is what are the benefits and one are what are the choices you're making? And for us, being cloud native was one core choice, but it was coupled with a few other important choices. And, and especially those choices were that we deliver the core network as a service. That was a hugely important one. 
And the third one is that we deploy it consistently across the globe. Uh, and the fourth one is we make it programmable. So we made four, I would say, compared to what the, the rest of the industry, I think, is largely doing, extreme choices. We, we, we do the cloud as a service, uh, globally consistent and programmable. And those in conjunction deliver, we think, enormous benefits, uh, certainly uh, a, a vast complexity reduction uh, that benefits our operators in terms of that we can do things faster and we can do things more affordably. Uh, and then the programmability uh, allows us to create an ecosystem of products and services on top. And the as a service model, I think, is extremely fundamental and, and very misunderstood in the industry, especially the difference between, I would say, managed service and software as a service, where delivering software as a service allows you to build a product, a true product and a true platform. Now which means that you can actually build a future proof solution and not a one off deployment. So the net benefit for operators is a more affordable, uh, more innovative, a faster evolving network with, with orders of magnitude, more innovation. power. Can we take a deeper look at what you're doing with programmability and enabling third party innovation via APIs? Because this is something we really haven't seen before with a mobile core. Yeah, so I think this is a you know it's a bit of the the, the unicorn in, in the industry, right? It, it's it's a very elusive thing this programmability and this ecosystem. I think yeah, for us it really started back with with Werner, my my the, our C, my CTO and co-founder. He um, they were trying to build small applications on top of the network yeah, while in Telenor, and like I think everybody else who's tried that, they discovered that getting access to the network is difficult. Number one. When you do get access, you're faced with, with fairly complex, uh, fairly old telco protocols, in, in this case, for example, SIGTRAN, et cetera, for SMS. And that means that building becomes more expensive, more complex than you would like, which in turn means that you spend more money, which means your business case becomes tougher. And then what they discovered is that, you know, the way to expand the business case is to sell the product to more operators but lo and behold, these operating networks are different enough that scalability is a huge challenge. So we try to address all of those points in one go. So number one, we open the network in a safe and secure way through our developer portal. Number two, we have rebuilt the network so that we expose modern developer friendly protocols. So we, we translate all of the telco complexity into something a developer can understand. And number three, we deploy this globally consistently. So a developer can build and publish a product for an operator in Germany, for example, or in the UK, and that will work across the globe and any operator can use the product easily. So it's, it's much more similar to Android than a traditional operator in how the, the, the whole app ecosystem works with us. Well, you've obviously had to overcome many challenges with this new approach. What would you say have been the biggest learnings for you? Uh, that's a lot. Uh, that's a big question, an interesting question. I think, uh, I think the good parts of it is what you can achieve with a small team that is focused and dedicated on changing the industry is, is quite amazing. So you can really leveraging cloud, leveraging some open source tools. It can be a force multiplier in, you know, the 100 to 1000 X, the resources that you would have needed some years ago. Um, I think, um, secondly, I think that the, maybe the, the, the toughest thing has been, unsurprisingly, uh, the sales process, which is you know, brutal in telco. So we had, we were lucky. We had Telenor with Vimla as an early customer on the platform. So we, we came with, you know, a, a, an incumbent customer that, that was a developer partner for us. And that's been a big thing of our journey. We had uh, Hutchinson with IOD, which was took a bet early on and really has been extremely successful in that and has really been an amazing customer for us, pushing us to the next level. We have Moby in the US really pushing now for this differentiation and this app ecosystem, bringing in partners uh, and really looking to create additional value for their users. So I think we have, our, you know, and, and we have MTI and Kyocera on private networks in Japan. So we, we have our early set of customers 
but that has been a, a long and tough journey. Selling critical infrastructure to operators is, is not for the weak of heart, I think I can say. Well, you're succeeding and we're really uh, pleased to hear that. Um, at the moment, you know, we, we hear an awful lot about the, you know, there's this debate about public cloud hosting, the pros, the cons, the costs, etc. Can telcos instead perhaps use hyperscaler technologies in their own data centers and infrastructure and create their own localized, regional, cloud native and hosted cores? It starts with what you're trying to achieve, I think. So there are 700, or depending on how you count, there are some 700 operators in the world with 700 different core networks. So if, you're, if you want to gain scale as an industry and programmability as an industry, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't help to, to deploy cloud edge infrastructure in your data center. Then, then that's a completely different objective you're trying to achieve, I would say. Um, but I think this is, it's a big and complicated question. I think the short answer is cloud will keep expanding to more and more edge applications will partly run in very centralized locations, partly run in, in lots of edge locations. Those edge locations may be part of the, the telcos data centers. Absolutely. Uh, and that could be a, a good choice in, in many cases. But I think it's, for me, it's kind of a, it's a secondary question. It's not really about whether this is running inside the telcos, you know, data centers or not. That's for me a, 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 an obvious conclusion to a question which starts with what are you trying to achieve? Uh, so I think you can solve programmability issues in a different way or have to solve in a different way. I think you can solve national regulation in a different way. I think you can solve security in a different way. And then there are certainly latency requirements, et cetera, that may require you to run them in, in telco data centers. And then it's absolutely a, a, a good choice. But it really starts with a, a profound understanding of what are you trying to achieve? And then the location and the choice of infrastructure follows from, from the objective, I would say. So it comes back to what you said earlier, that cloud in itself is not the end game here. You've got to focus on what it is you're looking to achieve. Well, you, you touched on the edge there, um, and I've just got a final question for you. With this whole approach, is there a private network play here? Uh, absolutely. And I think, I think that the very interesting thing about the industry, I think that you know, the, the, the lines between public and private networks are going to be increasingly blurry. The way we think about this, this is a platform for core networks. It's like an operating system for mobile networks. So whether you are a big MNO with you know, tens or hundreds of millions of users, if you're an MVNO, if you're an IoT player, or if you're a private network, you're actually using almost the same core network functionality, just at very different scale. And the way we are building this is as a multi-tenant core network. So you can use the same network for 10 sims in a private network and for 10 million sims in a public network. So for us, those are just tenancies and slices of the same network using the same application, getting the same security and getting the same ecosystem in place. So we're absolutely uh, building a platform for all of these use cases across, which is untraditional, we know, but you know, this is the way that Amazon and Azure that's the way they go to their customers. You know, if you are a tiny startup with a credit card, or if you are Citibank, you're using exactly the same storage service from Amazon. And we don't see why the core network should be any different. Absolutely fascinating. Well, we must leave it there, Erland. Good talking with you, and thanks for sharing your views with us today. Thank you very much for having me.